End game spoiler discussion. Yeah, I mean, look, I have this. You better believe I'm gonna have it in a review. <laughs> and then I just look, look, I just snap, snap, brought everyone back, just killed them all. I am Iron Man. Great stuff. Uh, look, we're we're in the end game now. And I already we are did our non spoiler review today. I'm doing a spoiler review. I'm gonna try to keep it down because. Uh, my dad's currently downstairs, and he hasn't seen it yet, so I don't want to be loud and spoil anything for him. But right off the bat, I can, I, I've can heard some people say they have issues with the first two acts, and I can see that. I, I can understand where that comes from. To me, I was eating the first two acts up, like, because when it came to the predictions... I, I knew Thanos was going to be in the movie more than what we were seeing, what was being implied, but I also figured they were going to try to take him out pretty early on. So when we first see that entire scene with them trying to take him out, um, it's uh, it, 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 we get that, that reveal that he just used the stones to destroy the stone, which, isn't, which theoretically is possible uh, in Marvel continuity anyway. Uh, and just to see how, because when, when, when you see him, he's there, he's farming, he's just living a peaceful life at this point. And I was like, you know, I'd leave him alone. <laughs> he's, he's, he's paid for it. Because you see him, and we know from Infinity War that his arm was burnt and the gauntlet was damaged, but he, we see him again in his whole upper arms and he's got this burn on his face. I'm like, wait, what did, like, did it spread? And then he explains, like, oh. And then they'll come in and just cut off his hand and then just, flunk take his head off. I'm like, I'm going to be waiting to see how this plays out. And then we get the reveal that it's actually the past Thanos that comes back, and it comes through the quantum realm, and that's who they're fighting. It, it was just a really interesting. And this is Thanos in his prime. Prime Thanos. He's kicking Thor, Captain America, Iron Man's ass. That, his blade. Now this, someone, I couldn't really explain why. But I explained that in uh, the fight I had, um, I who we went there earlier this week with uh, Thanos versus Superman from the M Man of Steel, uh, Supergirl, CW Supergirl, and Flash, and Suske Eisen, that his blade could cut them. When he's just wailing down on Cap Shield, and you actually see it start to really chip the vibranium shield away. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, man, there's just so much to unpack with this. I mean, Tony's death, uh, Black Widow's death, uh, a lot of deaths, the, the heist. Uh, it's it's just a lot to unpack. But I think one of the things I want to start with is how many people they got to come back. Not just the main cast, not the people we knew was coming back from the snap from Infinity War. But you get Tilda Swinton back as the Ancient One. You get Robert Redford in there for a scene. Frank Grillo, I believe his name is, uh, for Cro uh, Crossbones is back there. Sitwell is back. Um, uh, uh, Rene Russo is Thor's mom. The scene with him and Thor, uh, so Thor and his mom was a really well acted scene between him and uh, Rene Russo. <laughs> and he's like, you know, Rock is. I love this scene too. Like, right? He's having a freak out. Rock is like, no, come, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> it's like we all lost people you know you can do this um now i thought they brought natalie portman back turns out that was unused footage from thor the dark world so they worked um i'm trying to remember who else they brought back uh because they brought back a lot of people they brought back oh god i don't know the actor who played um tony's dad but they brought him back uh, apparently the guy playing his, uh, Jarvis there, his butler is from the Agent Carter series. She, um, Pe Peggy Carter's back, uh, as well. So, uh, Haley Atwell, Atwell. So they brought, I, I was amazed they brought so many people back. And then, I mean, you get to the first act. Well, actually, first off, the opening scene, that was one of the predictions I got right. Because I'm like, we see it briefly in the trailer, him with his family on his farm. That's the opening scene. Hawkeye's family getting dusted. And you just see that they're all enjoying themselves. Like, who puts mayo on a hot dog? Uh, <laughs> and he says, I go get the arrow. And he just turns around, you know, turns his back on his daughter real quick. He looks back and she's gone. And then he looks back again and his entire family is gone. And we learn that he becomes Ronin and he's been butchering people for five years. <laughs> it's like, 
we all have our coping mechanisms, I guess. What's also really interesting is how they talk about uh, 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 Black Widow even says to uh, Capo, like, you even say silver lining, I'm going to smack you in the face with a peanut butter sandwich. She's making a sandwich for, their, for herself. Um, and and he's because he's talking about you know I saw a pot of whales in the harbor less ships cleaner water. It's it, it's sad to say I mean it sucks because Thanos is when we really see him again he really is evil in this in the original in, in Infinity War Thanos was clearly the bad guy he's evil, but you could see good intentions out of it uh, out of what he was trying to do it was just the better, wrong way of doing it. And he, he even said in the Infinity War that, you know, the, that his method, there was proof of concept with his method that wiping out half the population of a planet 20 years, like years later, they had no, oh, the kids of that planet knew clear skies and full bellies. It was a paradise. It's, and it's like, I did that. It's like, he had proof of concept. It's just the fact that he, he even says in the movies, like, you know, I, but I did not underestimate that people will never forget. So uh, next time, and so this time I'm going to basically rend this universe down to its very atoms and re rebuild a new universe where no one remembers this. So, you know, no, this, this is, uh, th th no, Thanos is evil. Thanos is evil, but you love him for it. Man, he's such a good villain. Even in the, he's, I will say this, he's not as good in this as he was in Infinity War. But Thanos was still... like Thanos in Infinity War is the top of the top. Thanos in here is right about here. He's a bit more two... He's a little less three-dimensional, but not by much. and Not by enough that I would say he sucks by any stretch of the means. But, I mean, you have the scene where... Now, here's the interesting thing. I believe it was the Russos who said a while back, like an interview, that Nebula actually gets along strangely with... Actually, you find forms a friendship... One of the guard, one of the guardians, and it's like, or one of the uh, Avengers, a unique friendship with one of the Avengers, and the question becomes, which Avenger was it? It was Tony. Tony was the Avenger. She actually formed a friendship. They, you see them playing like, well, oh, like, um, oh, uh, table football. <laughs> you see them play the, and he's teaching her how to play that. It's like, Rrr. it's like, no, 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 you don't catch it. This, this, this is the goal. It's like, yeah. And it's like, look, man, this, see, that's tied that up, and he won. Did you, did you have fun? I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> and she, you see him, uh, you know, see they running out of food, and he hands it to her, and then she just, no, you eat it. And yeah, and then she even like puts him, basically puts him to bed in the, like the captain's chair as he's, you know, they're getting ready to die the next day. And Captain Marvel saves him. But you can actually, see, the evolution of Nebula in this, I, I love the evolution of Nebula because you see the progression of her, particularly because she gets to confront her younger self also, and the choices they have to make, and she actually ends, has to end her younger version's life. But the way that they they handle the progression of the character, she's straight villain in the first movie. Second movie, she's a villain, but then she is on the Guardian's side by the end of it. And they, they reconcile. And then by Infinity War, she is definitely on their side. And now by this point, she's not a villain. She She's still harsh and has issues with social um, interactions. But she's, she's not evil anymore by any stretch of the means. She's just... Because she was made to be something else, she has never had time to really interact and you know have those personal ties. She also has a good moment with the War Machine too. Like I wouldn't have been surprised if they shared a kiss at the end. That would have been interesting. Um, uh, so I really like what they did in Nebula. Let's talk Thor for a moment. Now, they you want to talk about really great marketing for hiding this. What they do with Thor, Mark was even saying, he's like, you know, because we have a, a buddy of ours, he who, uh, the powers that be, as he likes to be called, he doesn't like his name, he doesn't even like to be on the channel, let's just find out, I can respect that. He looks very much like Thor, he's blonde, blue eyes, blonde, blonde hair, blue eyes, when he had long hair, he looks very much like Thor, shorter, but he's also pretty built, too. Um, not, he's not like tiny, tiny, but he's, he's on the shorter side. Uh, but... Thor, as we see, is feeling very, is like just rattled with guilt that he didn't go for the head for the, in the first strike. And even when he killed Thanos, it meant nothing because he couldn't undo it. So he's just been binge drinking and abusing his body. So he's just this out of shape, just allow, oh, basically the dude. He's the big Lebowski. He's just walking around like the big Lebowski. But then when the final fight comes, it's like, just so we're all clear on this, and he brings. The Stormbreaker and Mjolnir, which he took back, which 
I point I leaned over to Mark and just said he he just took his younger versions version of Mjolnir. It's like yeah he did. No, obviously they rectify that because Cap returns that to um, Asgard uh, by the end of it. We we know he does that because um, he doesn't have it at the end. Uh, but still, he's like just takes them all, and his beard suddenly turns into these knots, and he's but he's still got the gun with his armor on. <laughs> oh man. Um. So yeah, it was interesting what they did. They did. I heard. I've heard some people say they overdid it with Thor on that a bit. Um, but at the same time, I mean, um, <laughs> uh, at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I totally get it I, the, that he, he's rattled with guilt, so he's a little off, he's been abusing himself and he's a bit rattled with guilt, so he's a bit off. But when it comes down to it, he still does what he has to. Um, and that scene he has with Rene Russo where they're interacting again, he, yeah, that was that was a really good scene. That was just a fantastic scene. Uh, I mean, everyone has their moments. I will say it was kind of, even though the impact of the scene was really, I'll actually say it had a little bit taken away for it. I'll explain in just a second. Uh, the scene with Hawkeye and Black Widow, who's going to sacrifice himself for the Soul Stone, Basically running off the... It's a fight. It's like, I'm going to die first. I'm going to die first. It's Black Widow. It was good, but... Um, again, I was watching someone explain why they had an issue with the scene, and they brought up a really good point that... They... They use the exact same music, and it kind of lessens the impact of it. it at least in my, in my mind, yeah, it kind of did lessen the impact. Also, we are getting a Black Widow movie. That's pretty much all but announced. So... How is that going to play out? The real question here is, we have a Scarlet Witch and Vision series coming, uh, a Wanda Vision series, a Bucky and um, Falcon series. That one explains itself. Loki series. Loki in one timeline gets away, so this might be that alternate Loki's rea um, getting away. Um, and we have a, a Black Widow movie. Vision's still dead. So that to me te that tells me that the Vision Wanda series may be an alter. They may try to go into the alternate reality world, uh, um, alternate reality uh, timeline explanation, or it's taking place between Civil War and Infinity War. With the Scarlet Wit, uh, Scar Black Widow movie, I'm thinking it might be a prequel because there's. Look, nothing is impossible. You can bring every one of these characters back if you really want to. St Tony, um, Black Widow, you could bring them all back, theoretically speaking. But some characters have an easier way in, or easier way out than in, uh, or easier way out, way, easier way back in than others. And look, the Infinity Stones in our reality are gone, so you can't do that. It's not impossible. There's probably there probably your individuals who can bring the dead back. We're, we're gonna have to meet them on some other in some point. Um. So yeah, I'm curious to see how that's gonna play out. But I mean, two more things I want a few more things I want to touch on before I get to the finale, which is that final hour pretty much. Uh, how they handled Tony, this. Look, this is this is the evolution of a character, uh, where that that playboy who just you know was wild and how, was just didn't was just trying to do good uh, from early beginnings, uh, humble beginnings to a man who for self is. I love that re a reaction or interaction with Star, uh, Tony and Cap when they come back and he just blows up on Cap and look, Captain America: Civil War. Ultimately, Cap is the one who's right. We know that because it's his movie and, you know, he's Captain America. But honestly, in a real world scenario, I actually think Tony's more correct in this in the issue that Tony was more in the right, I think, than Steve was. But Tony didn't go about it in the right way is the problem. That was the problem with what Tony was doing. Not that his what Tony was doing was the right thing. It just was the wrong way to go about it, I think. Um, and 
Look, Tony does. Tony doesn't uh, mince words with him. He's like, look, I want a pseudo armor around the world for this exact reason. He's like, yeah, well, that we, we that didn't work out. Like, yeah, well, where were you? Huh? You said we lose win together or we'd lose together too. Where were you? It's like, he kind of calls Cap out a little bit on that. Now I'm not saying Cap's com completely wrong. I'm not saying Tony's completely right, but Tony makes a legitimate point in that, and he passes out for malnutrition. And then we see five years later, he has that he has a family. He has that he has their daughter Morgan. He's married with Pepper. They're really ha they're happy together. Uh, and undoing the snap, he doesn't want to lose what he's got now. So that's the question that they're trying to pose. Now I will say, I brought it up briefly, but I'm a lot of people that a rat is the reason Delane got out of the of quantum realm. A little convenient, but okay. Uh, and then the whole concept of time travel with the quantum realm. I like the fact it's like, no, back to the future, this is all wrong. No, look, if you go to the past, your past, you're going that's your future now. And your present becomes your past. And so for the, basically time for us still moves linear lin linearly but just even when you're going back and forth through time you're you're still moving forward in your own time it's that um uh, you're still moving forward in your own time it's just you're going in different periods of that but that doesn't mean it, that doesn't change the fact that you're still going forward within your own day. time doesn't change for you in terms of like aging chronologically and things along those lines now, I've heard they kind of counter contradict some of that a little bit. Like, when Steve goes back and lives in the past, he's there. He's a, he's now an old Steve Rogers. But, um, uh, but how could he, if the, if you can't change the future by changing the past, how does he get there? And I heard someone bring up a really good point is that we know Peggy was married in the future. Uh, and had a family and everything along those lines. Who's to say that that wasn't Steve? Who's to say that wasn't Steve? And that they're and look, Chris Evans is still around. He's like he's Captain America's still there. There are, there's easier avenues for him to come back than Tony Stark. Uh, but there's easy there's avenues for him to come back. It's what he wants to, if he wants to, if Marvel wants him to come back. And trust me, I think he'll come back at some point. I don't think he's <laughs> really gone. I think he'll, but we won't see him again for a while. Uh, so the whole concept of time traveling, I did understand it, but at the same time, it's like they contradict, they contradict themselves a bit. I will also say this: you know they're going to make it. I want the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> I, I need that in my life. Uh, I have to expect to walk through Target and find one, but I'm like that would have been a major spoiler that they would have been sued over a bit of it maybe not but <clears throat> maybe not sued but they would have probably got spoken to by disney uh so yeah uh and then the whole heist actually the whole heist sequence is really when they go back to the first event the fight in new york that's where hulk that's where banner hulk professor hulk talks to tell the swims the ancient one they explain the older timeline <sighs> i was kind of hoping for world breaker hulk honestly i would have liked to have seen that not professor hulk I, uh, it was it was it was good, it was good, but uh, I don't know. I uh, something about Professor Hulk. I'm like I was never a big fan of Professor Hulk. I would have preferred to see World Breaker Hulk, or you know, and him just rage out completely. I like the fact that he's the one that survived, has to use the gauntlet first, and he's charred up. Um, but look, look, we're all the thing we're all raving about is that ending, that last battle and holy hell did they deliver on that i swear we are all just in the audience going yeah multiple times when he draws mjolnir and mjolnir starts to move I'm like okay oh, captain marvel because i'm thinking captain marvel show this is where captain marvel shows up and like has mjolnir in her hand and then thanos gets hit with it and then we see Steve Rachel, i'm like oh and thor's like i know it it's a great call back to adriel and he just starts beating Thanos' ass with it, but then Thanos takes the advantage on him again. And ultimately, like, they're losing. And then he starts to ch chip away Cap Shield, and, uh, you know, Thanos even says the lines, like, you know, the whole time I've ever done this, I've never taken anything personally. But I'm going to enjoy 
destroying this planet, <laughs> raise this planet to the ground when I kill you. And you just, and that shot, that shot with Captain America, with his damaged shield, just tightening that strap, facing off against all of Thanos' arm. It reminded me of the shot of Yoda and Luke in The Last Jedi, looking at the fire. And you just, oh god, it was fantastic, it was beautiful. And then you get that like, Cap, 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 Sam, on your left. And then the portals start to open. And at first it's Chichala, Shuri, and Okoye. And then more open. Doctor Strange, the Guardian Spider-Man. And then Condon shifts and armies. And... And then, and then you get Avengers assemble. And then they just charge in. And then you see Ant -Man, me and Mark, even, Mark. I hear Mark just go, oh. And Ant-Man just slugs the Leviathan in the face. But... Oh my god! Now, with all the awesome that gets, and we're going to continue in just a minute, there's one scene that's both awesome and a little cringy. Just how, like, the scene where all the female members of the Avengers, and seeing Rock, Pepper, by the way, as rescue, oh, so good. Um, but seeing Rock, uh, Pepper there as rescue, um, all the female Avengers lined up, basically, you know, passing the gauntlet off, getting Captain Marvel to the choke point, and where she needs to get it. That was both awesome to see, but I even explained to my girlfriend, who initially was a little like we were har we were already harping on, thought we were already harping on, but she missed the beginning of the conversation. We had, uh, talked about how to make that scene better, and because it's just them all getting together and then they all charge. What would have been really what would have been the cool way to do that, in my mind, the cooler way, anyway. Was Captain Marvel, you know, charging through, having the gauntlet on call, kind of get, you know, Thanos' forces are starting to force her back a bit, but then you get one of the female Avengers, and then the other one, and the other one. They all come in and aid and aid, and then you all just get them in one shot, and then you get that, like, that Age of Ultron shot where they all come in and just like that. That would have been an awesome way to set that shot up. As it was, it was still cool, little cringy. And then you get, and then you get Thanos and Mark, Captain Marvel, and initially he can't, but he even headbutts her and she doesn't punch. <laughs> but then he takes out the power zone. And you even see the look on her face, like, boom, <laughs> just, just knocks her out cold. Oh, man. And then you see, and then that shot, the shot, because you, Tony even says, you said fourteen, you said fourteen million possibility. Tell me this is going to win. If I tell you what happens, it's not going to happen. And then you get that look. And you see, like, Tony's contemplates it, and he looks at uh, Strange. And this is the moment, and the Strange just has his finger up. One chance. And Tony grabs Thanos, and at first I think he just grabbed one of the stones. But then it's like, and it's like you, you are just, I am inevitable. And then, then nothing. And the gauntlet, and then you see the stones all go onto Tony's hand. Now, I've heard some people ask, okay, how is Tony able to survive using the stones where Hulk barely could hold on to him? And uh, how is that the case? I think the reason that Tony was at the very minimum able just to have the gauntlet on um, is because his suit, because unlike, unlike Bruce, unlike Thanos, Tony actually has a suit, and the, because the gauntlet that they made uh, with uh, Star Trek is just the gauntlet. So it's still all coursing through your veins, and it's only concentrated in the gauntlet and then going through the rest of your body. With Tony, he has a whole suit that can take the brunt of some of that power, so he's able to hold on to it a bit better. But then that line's like, I am, and he pauses, Iron Man, and then just dust them. And then I, I was expecting Dan to see something, but thinking, oh, I'm glad he didn't, because the way Jess Brolin acted that out, even with all the fact that CGI is like, he was just defeated he had nothing to say like just lied there he just stood sat down and accepted his fate and he's like damn <laughs> and then now here's the thing i actually mentioned in the spoiler review or the non-spoiler i had been accidentally got a spoiler for something this was the spoiler. now granted i had actually forgotten it luckily by the time i went to the movie because i was so enraptured with the movie but the death of tony stark was the thing i accidentally got spoiled about i'm like shit and like first i got spoiled and shit like tony's dying and l let me tell you that i don't cry i don't rarely well i cry a bit more these days just to personal reasons um but it's still not very often i wasn't crying but the emotion that was going that was that was a choke up moment that was like 
you see, you know, they're all there. You know, Peter's there, but we can see instant kill in action. That was pretty awesome. Dude, he's like, Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark, we did it, we did it. And you see Tony's near catatonic, but he's still, he's barely processing anything. Just... And then, you know, see Rhodey just there, and he's got tears in his eyes, and you see Pepper get up and say, Tony, Tony, did And he, 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 under your, under his breath, you barely hear him say, hey, Pep. And just say, hey, Pep. It's okay, you did it. We'll be okay. You you can rest now. <laughs> and he, he goes... Oh man, that 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 would, he's Robert. He started the MC. Robert Downey Jr. was. I'm actually starting to get a little emotional talking about it. He started the MC. We've had ten years of him as Tony Stark. We have loved him since the day we saw him as Iron Man. Even though even in Iron Man Two, which I'll admit is not my favorite Iron Man. It's not my favorite MC movie. It's not the best one. It is one of the lesser ones. I still like it. I actually don't hate any of them. Uh, and Iron Man Three, which is it's it's good, but understandable but you still loved him in it you you grew with this character there are kids who saw maybe iron man as like a five-year-old who have grown up all their life knowing to iron man knowing robert Downey jr as iron man tony stark and to see him go out and go out like a badass and a boss and save his family his friends and the entire universe if you had to make him let have him go that was the way he had, that was the perfect send off to him. And he, you still get one scene of him where he recorded a message just before, cause he didn't know if they were coming back for the mission. And he quotes that line, love you 3000. Cause his daughter says like, I love you 3000. It's like, wow, 3000. Well, I, I, our daughter just said, I believe she loves us 3000. You were in like the mid six to sevens. <laughs> um, but you know, and then he just, you know, just before he turns that recording, I was like, love you 3000. That was like message to his daughter, and then you get that line with him and Favreau, or Favreau and her, just like, "Are you doing I'm fine? Good? He's like, are you hungry? Yeah. What do you want? Cheeseburgers?" And then you see Favreau just kind of get a little emotional, like, "You know, your your dad like cheeseburgers. You can have all the cheeseburgers you want." It's like, "Damn!" It's, I'm getting more emotional now than I did in the movie. Um, it's like, "Damn!" Right in the feels. I'm I'm because I'm taking my friend Shanae tomorrow to it. She's I don't think she's prepared. I don't think she's prepared. I'm going to be really interested to see if she's balling. Um, so, oh, God. Yeah, and the funeral scene, everyone who's still there is there, and it's just beautiful. And then Cap goes, and, you know, he returns, it, and he, we see him there, and he stay in the past and married Peggy and passes on the shield to Sam. Now, I did note some things. Um, someone made a good point. He didn't say you're Captain America now. You just said he's passed on the shields. Like, I'll try to be more of the other. You want to tell me about her? Nope. <laughs> and the last shot of the movie, the last shot of the movie is him and Peggy in their home having their dance. He got his dance with his wife, Peggy. And you just see Peggy there just holding him, and he's just holding her. And... <sighs> What can you really say? As someone who has seen all of these movies multiple times since Iron Man, a full decade, what has been known as the dubbed the Infinity Saga, they you, they had to stick the landing and they stuck it. They planted their feet in the ground with that landing and they stood proud and tall. And all I can say is thank you, Russos, for giving us this movie. Thank you, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, um, all the actors involved, thank you for giving us this movie, because this, this really wasn't, the more I think about it, the more I'm loving, the, I really did love this movie. I still don't think it's my favorite MCU movie, but I, at some point, I'm going to have to me redo my list of, uh, favorite MCU. I don't think I actually ever did a list of MCU movies. I'll probably do a top ten of worst to best at some point. With the MCU movies, I don't think there's a worst, I mean, there's a, there's the least best, but there's nothing bad in the MCU. There's the lesser ones, certainly, but... 22 films now? Yeah, I can make a top 10 worst and best and still have room in the middle. So, yeah. Anyway, that is my spoiler review of Infinity War. Or Infinity War. Uh, Endgame. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about some of your favorite parts. Things you didn't like. Because I'll admit, there was a few things that I was a little iffy on. Um, but ultimately, it didn't de uh, deter my enjoyment of the film. Uh, but let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want us to, uh, to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. Actually, that feels a little bit better. Um, 
I, I'll have a who would win tomorrow. I'm seeing again and game again tomorrow night as well. Uh, got a pre-record. I've got I got it's pretty much the average week this week because uh, we're going into May, so it's the average week. So until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time, folks. And uh, what? And remember, have a good one.